Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Hello, boys and girls. This is uh, Volley Talks on this uh, page, uh, Plus Volleyball. My name is Alejandro Castillo. Very, very welcome. I'm broadcasting from Mexico City, the largest city in the world. Today, uh, Thursday, August 13 of 2020. Uh, today, uh, it's episode 89, and I have a very special uh, guest uh, today, uh, uh, an Oli Olympian, three-time Olympian, Two-time Olympic uh, Olympic medalist and a lot of and a lot of things. Uh, she's still uh, working right now as a coach. And we'll we talk with the great, great Paula Weishoff. Hello, Paula. How are you? Thanks. Thanks a lot for being here. Oh gosh, my honor. Just thank you for asking me to come join. It's a pleasure. No, oh, no, it's a pleasure for me. I uh, I want to to say uh, happy birthday to Lori Kimura. I hope that she's uh, watching us. Happy birthday, Lori. Happy birthday, Lori. I sent you a message this morning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for being here, Paula. Uh, you're, a, you're a legend in, in USA Volleyball, in World Volleyball. Thanks a lot for being here. I think, uh, well, I, I don't think, I'm pretty sure that it will be a very, very interesting talk with you. Thanks for being here. All right. What, what are we going to talk about today? What do you have? <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Yeah, well, obviously, first, you know, the, the, the common the common issue right now, this thing, uh, this coronavirus, who is avoiding us uh, for or being in, in the volleyball courts. How how are you dealing in, in California, in your in your college with this corona thing? You know, it's been it's been kind of a process since March. Um, I think my school's done a really, really good job. Uh, we just met today. We had a three hour meeting just how we're gonna bring the students back and then slowly, hopefully, um, again, the virus has to cooperate and uh, if we can get a vaccine, that'll help a little bit. Um, and just the different phases of what we're gonna have to go through to get back on the court. Um, I think it's it's sad to, you know, to see division two and division three cancel their championships. And then today division one canceling uh, fall sports uh, but I do understand that safety is first and, and totally get that. Um, but hopefully we can get sports back and we get volleyball um, back up and running. So hopefully soon. Uh, yes, I hope uh, just to, to our friends who are not very involved with the NCAA volleyball, uh, uh, women's volleyball uh, plays in fall, in fall, right? And in Correct. spring is mm -hmm. men's volleyball. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in, in the three divisions or just division one? Um, all divisions, women play in the fall and men play in the spring. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the last uh, NCAA championship of men's uh, was scheduled to be in Virginia, in George Mason. It was canceled. And I don't know if uh, for this year, women's, they already have a, a, a city to host or not. Um, I thought it was in Nebraska, but I could be mistaken. I think maybe that's next year. Um, but yes, they have, I think it figured out for two, three years where the national championship is going to be played. So because the last year I think was in Pittsburgh, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay, great. Well, that, that's a shame. Uh, but well, I think uh, for now, uh, we have to stay safe, the, the, the safest the possible and wait for the, for a vaccine, you know, there, I, I, I heard that there are uh, a lot of uh, initiatives for vaccines, but what we have to, it has to be accepted and, and fabricated and distributed. Mm -hmm. And that's no uh, one day to another thing. Yeah, I think it's gonna take a little bit, but we'll just keep our fingers crossed and Hope that again, they go through all the right processes and we can get it in place and um, it'll help. Yeah, and uh, well, with, your, you, with your athletes, with your students, how are you working, well, you and, your, and the other staff in the, in the college, how, how, are you, how are you dealing 
or which kind of drills uh, did you do with your with your athletes? So currently, we were we haven't been on campus. Uh, we've been off campus all summer. Uh, so we've just been doing Zoom calls. Uh, we went through a book and we did some, some, they have their workout programs and they're doing that. Every school is a little bit different. Uh, some are back and they were practicing, they got canceled. Uh, we're actually coming back to school in two weeks and then we'll have different phases, like I said, on when we come back in the gym and how we're going to go through that whole process. Okay, well, uh, I think uh, every college is, uh, is dealing in a different way, right? Right, yeah, everyone's just a little bit different. Okay, we have uh, the first message. Uh, my Mexican friend, Sam Cibrian, Samuel Cibrian, says regards pa Paula from Coach Sam from United Volleyball Club and Tech de Monterrey, Puebla. Hi, Sam. <laughs> uh, uh, Samuel will be here in the show on Saturday. Oh, okay. Nice. Yes, very, I've had a, the pleasure of meeting him, working with him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know him for uh, I think at least uh, thirty the last thirty years. Sam Sam Cibrian, he's a great guy, great coach, great personality, and well, he will be here in, on Saturday. Saludos, Samuel. Nice. So, Paula, please tell us something uh, as every every guest about your beginnings in volleyball. I read a little about you. And uh, not surprised because I think uh, 80 or 85 percent of the of the past guests, volleyball wasn't their first sport. And I read that uh, you also practiced track and field and softball. Is that right? Yes. I, ironically, I started with ballet, and when I was very young, and went to gymnastics. And then they were like, "You're too tall to do gymnastics." So then. I swam a little bit, did a little bit of tennis, and then um, I played soccer. Soccer was actually my sport. Um, and then I did uh, softball, track, and volleyball in um, high school. So I did four sports. I don't, I don't think most people do that anymore. And um, I thought I was going to go to college and play soccer and it ended up where I got a scholarship for volleyball. And the year before I was supposed to go to college, I was asked to join the junior national team. So that swayed me a little bit in the sense that I went to uh, Colorado Springs. We did what was called, um, I think it was the, the festival and it was super cool. So um, I don't know, a lot of the people that were there that played in that tournament are still my friends today. And I think that made the decision for me to switch over and go for volleyball. Great. And uh, it was, uh, I think it was a great, it was a great decision <laughs> for you and for volleyball. Volleyball has been a big part of my life. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of my friends or volleyball players or people that I've met along the way. And again, just, you know, having played overseas and coached overseas, just my, my volleyball family is huge everywhere in the world. And uh, once COVID is over and I can travel, I'll be able to go visit some people, which I love to do. But volleyball for you, it was a family thing. Uh, your parents played volleyball or how was that? No, my parent, my dad was um, football, basketball and baseball. And so were my brothers. Um, like I said, I just ended up my freshman year. They said, oh, go play volleyball. And uh, they kept me because I was tall. And then, like I said, I kind of kept progressing and got into a different group. Um, and so just kept going from there. But no, no one in my family played volleyball. Okay. And well, I also read that in, uh, in high school, you play at West Torrance High School in Torrance, California. Mm -hmm. um, ha, ha, what, what do you remember about uh, that time? Oh, you know, it, it's kind of funny. We were just going to have our, we won't say 20th high school reunion, because I think it's a little more than that. But uh, we have our West High School um, Facebook page and just connecting with everybody that's on there is just, we had a close knit group in high school. Um, I don't know if that's the same for everybody. Um, we're getting ready to go to the reunion. And of course, we're going to um, 
wait another year before we can all get together, but really looking forward to it, just the different groups and we've been posting and people have been writing about their lives and seeing where everybody is now and what they've been doing has been super cool to follow along. Great. Hey, we have another comment from Coach Rod, Rod Nelson. Great to see Paula on your show. Played with some of the greatest American players ever. Flo Hyman, Rita Crockett, Rose Maggers, or Majors, I don't know uh, how yes, to spell Rose it. Majors. And uh, Debbie Green. Yes. Oh great, my gosh. Great players, great names. I know. I was lucky. They made me look good. <laughs> <laughs> When you have them on your team, that's awesome. Yes, that is awesome. Yeah, they, they, they make the things a little way easier, right? Right. Um, I still, I'm still in contact with um, Rose and Rita and Debbie. So um, I actually visit um, Rita and Debbie quite often. So I'm still connected to them. That's great. And um, um, Paula, um, in which position, which position did you play since high school? What's the same in high school and in college and national team? How the, did you transition it to a, to a different mm -hmm. position? I was a middle blocker um, in high school. And then when I went to the national or junior team, national team high, um, college, I was also a middle. Um, and then I went overseas, still playing as a middle. But the nice thing, so Ari Salinger was my coach from 80 to 84, 81 to 84. And he taught us all the skills and we had to pass. So the nice thing, when I went to Italy, I played a little outside, some middle, some right side. Um, and then when I came back to the national team, Terry Liskevich developed a whole different system. Um, so I hit all three positions and I passed in the middle and I hit slides. So that was really fun. But that was back when the setters moved back and they didn't move up to the net. They were actually behind me and Lori would have to come in. Um, something you don't see anymore, but it was a lot of fun um, just creating plays and you know I could hit a lot of different sets. So it was really fun. And which position which which position did you enjoy the most? Just being on the court. <laughs> <laughs> a part of the six team. Right. No, everything. I just, I love playing. I mean, I love coaching, but you know, if I, if my knee was healthy, I'd still be playing. I really, really love playing volleyball. And it didn't matter if I was middle, outside, right side, it didn't matter. Um, probably just being in the middle. I love the middle. You know, I played that for most of my career, then moved to the right. Um, but the thing that kept me going was I could pass. So Uh, I think now that's kind of, you know, invaluable as you go into the, the national team level, you got to have those skills. So I was able to play for a very long time because I could pass and play defense and I had all the skills. Great, great. Uh, please uh, go back a little for your high school uh, uh, years. Uh, and we, in which time did you decide to go to USC? Uh, did, did you have another offers to go for another colleges? And mm -hmm. how was that decision? I was just talking about that today, actually. Um, I was recruited by Terry Liskevich. He was at UOP at the time. Uh, Dave Soji, who was at Hawaii. Um, let's see, Chuck Irby at USC. We had um, Rudy Sawara and then um, Andy Banikowski at UCLA. So those were my five visits. Those are my five schools. And um, so Janie McHugh, she played with me on the junior team. She was at UOP. Uh, Diane Sebastian, Diane Pestolacy now, uh, she played with me. She was at Hawaii. Uh, Dana Wall and Wendy Wheat. Uh, Wendy Wheat's actually married to John Cook. They were at San Diego State. Uh, Jeannie Beaupre was at UCLA. And so it was kind of hard because I had friends on each team. Um, and ironically, I went to the team that um, I hadn't played with. Oh, I did. I played with um, Iris and with Dana um, in club. And so we ended up, we said, let's do this together. And we all decided to go to USC. And that's essentially what happened. Um, we ended up there together. So. Great. And well, I am also aware that you won three national championships, right? Um, I won one as a player 
And then two as a coach. So when I came mm -hmm. back after my playing career, Lisa Love brought me back to USC where I was lucky enough to get my college degree and um, coach there. So yeah, two as a coach and one as a player at USC. Great. And at that time when you were a player in, uh, in USC, which other players or which other teams did you remember the, the best for being the most challenging teams of that time? Oh, everybody I just mentioned. So I had to play against some of my really good friends. So UOP, Hawaii, UCLA, San Diego State, those were all the teams that we competed and battled against. So. Okay, and in which year did you uh, won the championship as a player? Uh, 1980. 1980, wow. 1980, yes. Four years ago. Yeah, just recently, just close, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Ruth Nelson says, the first American national team player to hit a slide and the most effective slide here in the world. Well, Ruth would know. Ruth knows a lot of the facts. Um, <laughs> I think it was the first American to hit the slide. I think there was a Chinese player that was the first one to actually hit the slide, but I love the slide. Like I said, Terry developed um, a system where I could pass and hit the slide. So. Um, it is a really fun set, I have to say. I enjoyed hitting it. Well, in current time, a slide is a, is a, it's, it, it's played by a lot of teams, the slide play. Yes. Now, in the women's game, it's everybody does it. Um, not so prevalent in the men's game. Occasionally, you see a, 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 men, a, men, a male player that will actually hit the slide, but not too often. Yeah. And well, uh, did you finish school? And what happens then? You uh, you were offered to play overseas, uh, Italy, I think. So I went to college for one year, and then I left and I went to the national team. So um, I went to my first Olympics when I was 22. Um, Los Angeles, 84. Yeah, 1984. And then I went overseas. Yes, yeah, so I went to Italy, and I was playing in Italy, and then I came back for 86 world championships year. And then I skipped 88, but I came back in 92. And I kind of try to remember. So 92 and then went That's to Brazil. And then I played in Japan. And then when I came back, so after the 96 Olympics, Lisa Love, who was at USC, um, offered to get me in to pay for my schooling and I was the grad assistant. So that's how I got into coaching. So that's where I started. So kind of a long kind of process, but it took me 20 years to finally get my undergrad. So um, in 2000, I graduated um, from college. <laughs> so okay, 20 so, year plan. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go back a little for, so to, this, to this time. You spent only one year at the USC and well, I can assume that it was attracting for you to go play pro overseas. Um, I went yeah, at 22. That was when I went overseas. So I was very young. Yes. So that was my first experience um, traveling without a team with your teammates. Um, one of my good friends was in Italy, Dale Kio, and she said, come and play with me over in Italy. And um, I learned a lot. And um, I did get to pick up a language, so I'm fluent in Italian, which was really cool. Um, and I just learned a lot, a lot about myself. And, you know, I'd been a part of a team for so long and being told what to eat, what to wear, all of that. Then um, I got to grow up a little bit while I was in Italy. So I guess it wasn't too bad of a deal. <laughs> and uh, besides that, how was uh, the, the life for a, for a 22 year older? in a different country, different language, different food, and playing pro. Uh, how was the, 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 adapt the adaptation process of, to that? <laughs> I think it was a little, I was a little in shock at the beginning. Um, I depended on my good friend Dale for a lot, translating, understanding, learning. I mean, it, we went from practices that were eight hours a day, very strict to maybe not so strict and maybe a couple hours a day and, you know, people worked and they would come in late and, you know, it was just a, a, a little bit different, very, very different. 
um, stores weren't open, you know, during the afternoon, you know, you can, in America, you can go anywhere, buy anything, anytime. Um, so like I said, it was a, it was a great learning experience for me, just, uh, probably the best thing I could have done, even though I was really, really young. Um, and it was a lot of fun too, at the same time, scary, fun, growth experience, <laughs> all of that combined. So yeah, it was, um, yeah, I, I have no regrets about going overseas. And in that time, in early 80s, which were the, the greatest uh, volleyball names in Italian league for women at that time? Oh, my gosh. Um, in Italy, Manu Benelli, the setter. Um, gosh, now you're making me go back and think a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Lily Bernardi uh, for the Italians. I mean, Maria Luis. Was, yeah, great, yeah great. for the Cubans. Um, gosh, my mind kind of drawing <laughs> a blank a little bit, put me on the spot. Um, who was the setter from Japan? Kumi Nakata, just Kumi Nakata, a lot of great players. Norihiro, yeah. Motoko Bayashi. Yes, Obayashi was a little bit later, but yeah, yeah. Oh, great. And well, then uh, you were you were called to came back to to the United States for the Olympics, for the 84 Olympics? For, so I, so that was 92. So in 92, I came back. So 84 was uh, Ari Selinger and then 92 was Terry Laskevich. Um, so I came back and it was kind of a, a tough deal, uh, not tough, but um, I would play two weeks in Italy and then come back and train two weeks with the national team. And so I had to honor my contract in Italy at the same time that we were training with the national team. So um, got a lot of frequent flyer miles on that um, going back and forth. Wow, I can imagine. It was Terry would always ask me, he goes, how did you do that? And I said, I don't know. I just got up one foot in front of the other. And otherwise, I probably just stayed in bed and slept for a week. <laughs> I want to tell us a little about that, uh, of your first Olympic experience in, in 84. Uh, USA team got silver at, in, in that Olympics and in, in US soil. Uh, tell us a little about that, that experience, please. OK, yeah. So. Um, we trained in Coda de Casa, which is here in California, and it was a tiny gym. It was maybe a little bit bigger than just the court, and we trained. Um, that was kind of back. There was um, we trained eight hours a day, six days a week. Uh, traveled a lot. We we trained a lot in Japan, um, in Germany at the time. We made a lot of trips overseas, and um, it was kind of unprecedented. That was like, do, can women train? that long and that hard. And um, so there were a lot of articles that were written on just our, our training and how hard we went and how many hours we trained. Um, and then, you know, being able to go to the Olympics were actually in my backyard. So I grew up in Torrance and um, we played actually at the Long Beach Convention Center, which is about 20 minutes from my house. Um, we decided not to stay in the village, so we stayed um, at that time. We were training at Los Caballeros Racquetball Club, and um, there was an old, it's now a gymnastics center, but uh, we took the office buildings that was close by, and we had our gym, and we slept there, and we trained there, um, and we commuted from there to go to the Olympics. Uh, we did get to go to opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, and some of that, but uh, we chose not to stay in the village. So just a little bit different. 92, we actually stayed in the village. Um, so kind of two different um, experiences. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, talking about Los Angeles, uh, you, you are playing in the backyard. <laughs> I know. It was nice. I think back then before cell phones, you know, um, parents didn't travel as much maybe as, as the parents do now. So it was nice that my my mom and my dad got to see me play live because um, most of our tournaments, they, you know, there was no live streaming or computers or we weren't on TV. So it was nice that they got to be able to be a part of my experience. Yeah. And uh, Paula, which, uh, which, uh, which match or which, um, yeah, which team do you, do you remember the, the most of that Olympics in 84? Oh, I think a couple matches stand out. So, 
Um, and I was just watching a little bit of this on Facebook. I don't know who posted it, but uh, pool play, we played Brazil and we were down 0-2 and we came back in one. And then um, I want to say it was the semifinals with Peru. And then uh, um, we beat China in pool play and then we lost to China in the finals. Um, so that was devastating, of course. Um, but at that level, you know, you got to beat teams two, three times. And uh, they were better on that night than we were. Um, so, yeah, so we came away with the silver. Okay, well, silver is great, right? <laughs> you always went gold, but silver is good. Right. Well, kind of the story behind that, right? Um, for a long time, it was, okay, so you, you lose to get a silver medal, but you win to get a bronze. Yeah. So I was like, what's your favorite? Like, is it, was it better to win than it was to lose? And for a while it was kind of like, well, the bronze was, you win, right? Yeah, you're but winning now something. I'm able to look back at that and kind of let that part go. And very proud that I have a silver medal, even though you lose to get the silver. Uh, you know what? That is a it's a long term discussion and dilemma of a lot of coaches and players that you you you, you already told us. Uh, when you get silver, you lost the game, and when yeah. you get bronze, you win a game. And uh, and in the podium, almost all the times, uh, the bronze medalists are happier than the silver medalists. That's uh, right. I know a, they're celebrating and you're crying because you just lost. So it's, it's a little, it's a, it's, it's a different dynamic. Absolutely. And I think, um, took me a while to come to terms with that. And, um, you know, just like you said, a silver medal is pretty awesome. So not yeah. complaining. Okay. Well, but in Barcelona, you won bronze and we will talk about that a little bit uh, later. Uh, we have messages, um, Gaston Giorgio, saludos Alejandro Paula, he's an Argentinian referee now living in Spain. Gaston Giorgio. Um, Sam Cibrian says, uh, well, he, he have a question, Paula, when you recruit players, what does it mean to you to play well? So when I recruit players, what does it mean to play well? So when I watch them, what do I see? Is that maybe what the question is? Yeah, I think that's the question. Um, I look at a lot of things. I actually like to watch players when they're playing poorly or when they're losing, because I like to see how they respond to their coaches, to their teammates, to their parents. Um, it's always easy to win, right? It's easy to be a winner and it's not so easy sometimes to lose. So I like to... I spend a lot of time watching players, especially when, like I said, they're either losing or maybe not having their best match. Great. Thanks, Paula. Uh, please help me a little. Rose Mag it's Rose Maggers or Majors? How are Majors. It Rose Majors says, hi, Paula. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I love you, Rose. Hi. <laughs> But so, sorry, Rose, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not an English spoken native, but it's Rose Majors. I do believe. <laughs> Okay, I think, yeah. Rose Mayors Powell. Yes. Uh, Vicente Alvarez Villafaña says, hello, Paula and Alex. Thanks. Matias Castro, saludos. Uh, and Sam Cibran says, thanks for your response. Okay, so uh, when the Los Angeles Olympics uh, went over, we, what did you, what did came for you in, in volleyball? Uh, you told us that you, you skipped the Seoul Olympics in 88. Mm-hmm. Um, but what happened in that time between uh, between uh, Los Angeles and Barcelona? Okay, so after the Olympics, at that time, you really, I mean, it was you only played in one Olympics. And then we knew USA Volleyball was going to have a different coach and Ari was done. And nobody really had a plan. Nobody knew what was going to happen um, before. I couldn't really go back to college. Um, they didn't have the rule that you could retain your eligibility if you were on the national team. Um, so I only had one year left and I needed to go to school for three more years. So that was when my friend said, she had played on the national team. She said, come to Italy for a year um, and 
you know, kind of take a year off and see what happens with the national team. So I went to Italy thinking I was only going to stay for a year. Um, and then I ended up staying for almost 11. I played nine seasons there and I lived wow. there 11. Um, and then I, had, I did have the opportunity to come back in 86 um, with Terry and we went to world championships. Yeah, went to world championships. And then I decided to go back to Italy. And he had said, if you go back, you can't come back to the 88 team if we qualify for the Olympics. And I said, I understand it was a tough decision. Um, so I decided to go back to Italy. And then in 90, uh, Terry um, and Greg Giovanazzi called and said, hey, would you consider you know, coming back to the national team? And that was when I kind of did the Italy, US, Italy, US um, for about six months. So wow. um, yeah. Pretty tough. <laughs> it was interesting. Like I said, it was, um, I was on an airplane a lot. I remember I went to check in one time and um, the lady checking me in goes, oh, you only have a carry-on? Where's your bag? And I go, I only have a carry-on. I'm going there for a match and then I'm coming back. Wow. And um, it was very sweet. She bumped me up to business. It was very nice. She goes, okay, you deserve something better. If you're going there for a match and coming home. And so it was very sweet. So. How much hour of flying uh, is from LA to Italy? I think it's about nine hours, nine, 10 hours. From LA? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a long trip. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. And um, uh, well, what what is the thing uh, you um, uh, you think most of Italy? You uh, I, I don't have the word right now. You miss the most from Italy. Oh, uh, I mean, I think most my friends. Like I said, I have friends all over, and just. Um, <laughs> It was just, it was really nice. So in 84, you're playing against the Peruvian girls and you're playing against all these great athletes. And then you're going to Italy and you're still playing against them. Maybe they're there playing in the professional leagues, but then you're, you get to meet them on a, on a human level, a friend level, and um, just some of those friendships you'll just cherish for life. So that was the really cool thing. Cause then in 92, when you went back and opening ceremonies, I was like, oh, let's take a picture with um, Denise from Peru and let's go over here and take a picture with Anna Moser from uh, Brazil. And you would go over and you would talk to a lot of different people. So kind of the two experiences where you don't know anybody. And then you go to Italy and you meet so many other international players, not just Italians, um, obviously all their friends, the food, um, Food was wine. very good. <laughs> yes, the wine. Um, but yeah, mostly just for me, I think most of my life is just the friendships that I've created um, and experiences of just how how people took me in and took care of me. And um, it was just awesome because they okay. didn't have to do that. So yeah, it was many families, many people, many friends. Great. Th thanks a lot. And well, in uh, then in Barcelona in 92, uh, memorable Olympics, great Olympics. Um, what, what, what happened in the competition? Was, how, how different was the competition from the 84 to 92 for USA team? Um, I want to say Cuba, Russia, Brazil, all the same teams, Peru. Still, most of the top teams were the same, Holland. Uh, we ended up losing to Cuba in the semis. So then we ended up playing Brazil um, for the bronze medal. Um, and so, yeah, just a little bit different. Like I said, you kind of win the bronze, which is a little bit different. So you leave, I guess, um, maybe a little happier. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, 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 can, I, can, I can figure it out. And um, please uh, tell us a little about uh, your these matches, these kind, these kind of matches or, or rivalry, sport rivalry with Cuba. You know, uh, in Cuba in that Olympics, they went to, to win the first gold medal, first of three. Uh, what, how was that kind of, of, of matches considering USA and Cuba played in Norseca? 
Oh, Cuba was always a big rival and um, I'll never forget. So two experiences. One, uh, my trip to Cuba, we got to play in Cuba and um, they were kind of just playing okay. And then Fidel Castro entered the gym and they pretty much stepped it up right there <laughs> and kind of handed it to us a little bit. And then um, later on in my career, I got to play with Maria Luis when I played in Japan and mm. what an exceptional human being. Oh my gosh, adored her, yeah. In that you play with Maria in the IA in Orange Attackers? Yes, yep, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Well, yeah, Mireille is great. Uh, she she had been here three times, and mm -hmm. probably he she would be here a, a fourth time because you know people love to hear and to watch Mireille Luis, especially in 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 our country. You know, because the Cuba Mexico we speak Spanish, we are very close, but uh, people love to 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 hear Mireille Luis. She's she's great. Yes, I know. I was. I was lucky to to have ended up playing with her for a season. It was um, just just her court demeanor and just as she was as a person. It was pretty cool to play with her. All right, and in in that Olympics in in eighty two, you played uh, what outside here or you play uh, opposite? Opposite, yeah, I played opposite. I did hit outside one rotation, um, but yeah, most of the time I was on the right. And well, in Barcelona, which which uh, player uh, was the most difficult uh, to you uh, to for you to block <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in your position and to 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 attack to to evade the block of the other team? I mean, of course, Maria. I mean, you had Anna Moser. Um, trying to think. Um, I want to say it was Smirnova from, from Russia. Smirnova from yeah, Russia, yeah. From Russia. Um, just, I mean, when you're at that level, they're all good. So, but those were a few of the of the top ones. Okay. And uh, and uh, a special match do you remember in Barcelona? I don't know, maybe the semifinal. The semifinal was a little frustrating. I think I remember more playing, beating Brazil, obviously for the for the bronze medal. Um, so probably that was my favorite match. I think um, Cuba played exceptionally well. We couldn't get things going. I know it's always hard when um, you know you don't make it to you know the first or second place match, but hey, they played great. Yes, of course, great, great team. They went to go to win three gold medal matches. Right, that is yeah, true. Right. Uh, well, uh, I, I think, uh, well, maybe it's not of your concern because it happened to the main volleyball team, but uh, what, what did you remember about this, you know, with this thing when all the people, all the, all the players got shaved as uh, Bob Samuelson because, you know, that match, uh, losing to, to Japan in a uh, office decision. What, what, can, what do you remember about, about the environment in the, in the USA delegation about that situation? You know, I just, we all supported what they did. I think it was really cool that they, they took a stand and, um, you know, we play opposite days and so we don't always see each other. And so all of a sudden we're watching the TV and we're like, oh my goodness, look at our men's team. Um, and then later on, of course, you see them in the village, but that was the first time we had seen that. And um, yeah, hey, awesome. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, in the, um, you play in 82, uh, you have uh, plans for playing in Atlanta. Or did you decide that before to go retire in 92? What, what happened at that time? So 90, after 92, I ended up going to Brazil and then to Japan. Right. Um, and then Terry Loskevich again approached me and asked um, if I wanted to come back to the team, but in a little bit different role. He said, um, I think Karen Kimner and myself, he said, we'd like you to come and um, be a substitute, be, be the backup player. So um, different role, very different role, I have to say. So when my players say, I don't, 
you just don't know. You were always a starter. And I would say, no, ironically, I wasn't. I started for two Olympics and I came up, at, you know, in that Olympics as a backup. And it is very different. Um, you go in and you're either a hero or you come out, you know, a, lo a lot disappointed that you didn't make it better. So just, you know, as a starter, it's different. You have 10, 15 points before maybe you get pulled, right? As a sub, you come in and you have to make an impact right away. So just very different, different roles. All right. So um, when uh, Barcelona, after Barcelona, you play, you go to play only pro, no more national team, uh, not thinking in, in Barcelona. In Atlanta, sorry, in Atlanta. Right. After Atlanta, I had one more season in Japan and then came back and I thought I would go back to Italy. Um, I had gotten engaged to an American gentleman and so got married and been in the U.S. since. So. Okay. And you started your coaching career? Started coaching, yes. So um, like I said, Lisa Love brought me back to USC. I was able to get my degree. I got into coaching and um, I was at USC, I want to say seven years, right. seven years, and then um, left USC to be a head coach. I went to Concordia, where I am now, right. and I was there for five years. Um, and then I went to UC Irvine for six, and then now I'm back at Concordia. So kind of a little bit my coaching, just kind of a, a quick review. And well, also you, you were called to be as a part of the, of the staff of the national team, right? Correct. So in 2012, yes, yeah, so it was with Hugh McCutcheon, Karch, um, yes. So with that group, Jamie Morrison was our, um, was a part of that staff too. And uh, what, can, what can you tell us about that experience, your first experience, your first Olympic experience as a coach? You know, I've been really lucky, really, really lucky in the sense that I've had great coaches. So as a player, I had Ari and then I had Terry. Um, uh, Chuck Irby was actually my first coach. I should uh, also put some props up for, for Chuck. Um, but it was different. Hugh came from the men's side, you know, Karches and Icon. And so learning their style, their drills, how they were doing things, their learning curve going from the men's game to the women's game for me just was, it, you know, every day I got to be a little sponge and, you know, learn something new and try something new, which was the style was very different from the coaches that I had. So, um, like I said, I've been lucky in the sense that I've had so many good mentors and coaches um, that I was able to learn from. And well, at the end, you earned your third Olympic, Olympic medal. Yes, that's right. Even though coaches don't actually get a medal, yes. Yes. So silver, yes. Great. And um, no more appearances with the national team since London? So I'm not with the national team. I did, like I said, the World Junior Championships last summer. Oh, um, yeah, you told me. Yeah, in, here in Mexico, I was calling. Yes, yes. The rainy season and rainy city. Oh my gosh, the gym flooded. I've never been in a gym that flooded. And then two hours later, we started playing again. It was, they were impressive how they got that gym cleaned up and ready to go pretty fast. Um, but yeah, so occasionally the USA team will call and I'll be able to help with one of their pipeline teams. Um, always open, always there. I got to give back. I mean, volleyball has been so good to me. So just love helping out in any way that I can. Yeah, and it's always, a, it's always a great news, right, that, that you can go to help the national team. Hey, USA on your back is USA on your back. I can <laughs> imagine, yeah. So, uh, Paula, please tell us something about, um, maybe in two ways, your, um, your greatest influences as when you were a player and right now uh, when you started as a coach. Which persons uh, were your greatest influences? Oh my gosh, I said, I think I've just named all the people that have been great influences. You know, like I said, I've been so lucky. Um, Chuck and, and Ari, all they were rep, 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 train, train, train. 
Um, Terry brought in the six on six game, the studying of the video, the breaking down of video, and then Hugh with just, and Karch and, and Jamie just took it to another level. And so for me, um, like I said, I was very, very, very lucky uh, with having great people. Uh, Marv Dumphy, you know, I love going and listening to him. Um, I think the last four months uh, listening to uh, not just volleyball coaches, other coaches, TED Talks, reading books, just learning. It's been awesome, I think, the last five months to kind of have that little bit of a timeout where most of the time you're so busy during your day that you don't have time to do some of that. So, um, yeah, always growing, always learning. Great. And uh, overall, including your playing your play career and your coaching career, which uh, female player or male player did you impress most? Uh, I think it's difficult uh, when you are a top level player that uh, you can be a fan of a player, but I don't know, it may be in your case. Which player, male or female, did you say at some time, hey, she or he's a very good player, I want to play like him or like her in some time? I think I copied a lot. So um, with the slide, um, and I don't remember her name, a Chinese player. So copying her, watching her, there was a very good defensive player um, that played for Japan. And I would just watch her over and over and try to imitate her. Um, some of the greats, I mean, I didn't jump like Maria or Rita Crockett, but um, I could see the game. I could outwork my opponents. I, you know, I had the mental, the mental where I could just grind. Um, so I had a little bit of a gift there, but I would say, um, and then of course, just the power of Karen Kimner, you know, everyone, you know, as you're Great watching player. players, there's so many good players, so many people that you could just watch and copy and go, oh, okay, I want to do that or, um, so the best blockers. Okay. Kim Odin, Elena Odin. I would watch, I would be amazed in practice just watching Elena, how she would just, you know, look at her opponents and, you know, just being a student of the game and watching all these players and trying to add one something from all of the great players, if I could. So just studying the game, um, you know, watching the best passers, um, and just watching how they how they were able to create their platforms and what they were seeing. So, um, and then going to Italy, um, I hadn't jumped, I didn't do a jump top spin, and I was watching one of the Canadian players, John Barrett, and so I picked up um, the jump top spin. So just adding a little bit more to your game each time from some of stealing, copying from from the best. Great, right, thanks, thanks for sharing, uh, Paula. Uh, Coach Ruth Nelson says, what did Toshi bring to the USA program? Toshi? Oh my gosh, yes. Toshi was our assistant in 1984. And it was um, just that training, the, the reps, the technique. Um, him and Ari were um, just, Toshi could hit that ball for eight hours. I'm like, how is that guy's shoulder still on as we're doing defensive drills over and over and over? Um, but just that, the, the tenacity to keep going. Uh, um, I don't know. I think Japan is known for their fight, right? They're never giving up. They're just going through a wall. And he brought a lot of that with his training and his techniques and um, just being able to mentally be in the gym for that long. Um, he was, yeah, he was wonderful. He was a great trainer. Great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Paula, um, what do you think, uh, in your opinion, that needs the, the women's program to, to get an Olympic gold? I think it, it's, it's, it's so difficult. It's very, very difficult. But mm -hmm. well, the men's program, they got uh, three gold medals. What is, what is the little thing you think, uh, uh, needs to do uh, the women's program to, to get the Olympic medal. And I think uh, all of you uh, can be very, very happy if that happens, assuming mm -hmm. that it's very, very hard. I think at that level, it's like you said, what is the little edge? And I think Karch and Aaron and his staff 
understand that it's about chemistry and culture. Right. And um, I think they're on the right path. And I think they're going to have that edge next year when they go to the Olympics. They've proven that they can win. Um, and they've proven that they can do it with a lot of different players. And I think they're very versatile. Um, but I think the piece um, that Karch has brought to this quad is just that culture piece um, with the girls. OK, great. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think, uh, what do you think, or which do you think was the, I don't know exactly the word, the greatest or the most challenging match in your career as a player? The, the, the match or the, op the, the, the opponent that, uh, that brings the best of you in the match? I'm trying to think, I think, um, in 84 and the two toughest, I, I think was um, that first match that we played against Germany and we played against them a lot in, um, you know, kind of that jitters of playing in your hometown, essentially, right? Playing at home at the Olympics, that first match was um, just kind of stands out. That in Brazil, when we were down 0-2, um, were some of the top, there was a ton of them, but that, and then I want to say also qualifying for the 92 Olympics, we were down 02 and we had to come back to win in five to go to Barcelona. So some of those matches were the ones I think that, um, you kind of go, okay, well, here we go. We got to, all right, we're going three, you know, you're down 02. You're like, okay, we got three more to go. Let's just kind of settle in and keep fighting. Yes, of course. Um, regarding to to uh, Cuba volleyball team, uh, Paula, what else can you can you share with us um, about that great generation with Mireya, with Regla Torres, Regla Bell, Mir Magali Carvajal, uh, Lily Izquierdo, the setter? Um, how how were those uh, confrontations in the, in the early nineties? Oh, they were amazing. <laughs> I mean, you knew it was a battle. We loved playing Cuba. I mean, it's, I mean, they're just powerful, gifted, athletic. Um, they were feisty. They kind of yell in your face. Um, but those are the matches we loved to play. So those were some of our favorite matches. Yeah. And it was always a battle, epic battles. Yes, I can imagine. Very, very nice team, both USA and yeah. Cuba. Um, uh, and uh, talking about the, the actual players, the current players in, in the world, which uh, players uh, do you like the way they play or the energy they, they put in the, in the volleyball game? The current or who I played with? Current, current. Current, current players. Oh my gosh. Who are some of my favorite players? Um, well, when I coached, Krista Harmato, I loved coaching her. Uh, Faluk is another player that was really fun to coach. Um, and on the current team, I mean, I props to Jordan Larson, who's still out there and she just keeps reinventing herself and she's kept herself in great shape and she's a captain of our national team. And um, some of the new setters, I haven't had a chance to work with them or I've seen them just a little bit in college and just the impact that they're, they're having. Um, but those are some of the players that currently really impress me. Great. Uh, Paula, have you ever been involved in beach volleyball as a player or as a coach? You know, I played very little beach volleyball. I played um, one summer, I think back in the early eighties, I played the twos and then Probably the most fun was the, the four person. Uh, they had a four person league and I played in that. And I love that. That was really fun. Uh, but no coaching. No coaching on the beach. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, we have another question from coach Ruth Nelson says, will you ever be interested in coaching the women's national team, especially since there has only been one women coach in our team. Uh, she's talking about Lang Ping. Okay, so what was the question? Sorry. If uh, would you ever be interested in coaching the women's national team? 
<laughs> That's I think Karch is doing a great job. I think um, I think I'm happy where I am right now. I have a great life. Okay, great, perfect. Thank you. Uh, um, talking about uh, the, the the volleyball you played in the early '80s and the 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 dynamic of the volleyball in today's world, which do you think are the greatest difference? Uh, 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 besides uh, the speed or the size of the players, uh, the, the essential of the game, do you think, has been changed? You know, it's interesting. I get this a lot. Um, and I want to say, actually, volleyball is more simple now. Um, I think back in the 80s, we ran such a complex offense. We had so many different plays. We had combos and crosses and double quicks and pumps and fakes. And now I think the speed of the game is faster than what we played back then the speed, but now I think it's it's more simple. They've added back row. We didn't have a ton of back row at that time, just started um, attacking from behind um, the 10 foot line. Um, but I think it's a little bit simpler right now than it was back then. I think we did, but we trained a lot to be able to do that. So um, maybe faster now, players are taller, um, but I think it's a little, it's a lot simpler. People are trying to break it down. If you talk to most coaches, right, what do they say? Keep it simple not complex so passing get your angle out before i mean we were doing pass from here all the way across your body i mean there was so much involved i think it was a lot more complex some of the techniques that we were doing um and i think now just trying to keep it simple and um just be good for long periods of time totally agree with you uh paula totally agree with you um um what do you think about the um... How hard is to U.S. Uh, college players uh, to adapt to international playing? Uh, it can be in a national team or playing in club in Europe. Uh, what besides food and besides <laughs> all of that things? What, which is the the, the most uh, difficult uh, thing mm -hmm. that players have to adapt? I think at each level, just the speed of the game and just you know the training the level um like when you're in college you train or you play for three months when you go overseas or you're on the national team you're playing all year long and so you have to keep that consistency for longer periods of time and the level of play is higher so maybe in college there's one two three good players per team and maybe there's and i'm not trying to say that people don't have six good players but when you go to that next level or your club team or the national team you have six players across the board that are all good and so it's not like oh we can serve this player and serve her off the court no everybody has talent everybody has technique, everybody has skill and everyone's good. So what you said, you know, what is that little difference that's gonna, it comes down to inches, it comes down to one point here, one point there um, against these great teams. And everybody wants to be on the court. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Um, um, Paula, what do you think about the, well, the, the the libero is not a is not an also new position. It has been around here for the last twenty years. Uh, I think, in my opinion, it was intended in the in the beginning to be only a defensive player. But I think that libero has uh, has came to change a lot of the offensive uh, schemes. What do you think about that? You know, uh, we didn't have the libero when I ended my career. And I always say this, if we had had, Leanne Sato would probably be the best libero that the US national team has ever had. She was awesome. And she only got to come in for, you know, three rotations in the back row. And that was kind of a shame. I feel like she would have been one of the best. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's great for our game to have the libero out there. And there's some spectacular, right? 
liberos, I mean, when you watch just the athleticism, the court they cover, um, just makes our sport a little bit more dynamic. It's awesome. Yeah. And uh, Paula, if it uh, if it were up to you, which rule of uh, today volleyball will you change? Oh, what rule would I change? I would say if you had asked me a long time ago, I would go back to side out volleyball, but that would be way too boring because <laughs> at the time you had to actually, you know, get the side out and serve in order to score. Um, I don't know. I think it'd be fun to play around with. Could you add some of that back in? So maybe up to point 10, you have that, and then it goes to quick score. I don't know. You could play around a little bit. Um, I'm kind of a traditionalist. I like, I don't like change too much. Um, I think our sport is growing at an incredible rate and I'm not sure what we would need to do to change it, to make it better. I think it's pretty good right now. So um, I don't know, I'd probably say keep it the same. Okay. Well, um, Paula, it has been a really, really pleasure talking to you. Um, what, what do you think uh, will happen with the, with the season because the fall sports are over by now? What do you think will happen with, uh, with volleyball in next year? Well, um, we all hope that, you know, the championships can be played in the spring. I know it's going to be impactful at the college level because there's a lot of spring sports. Um, just the national team, I think uh, professional sports are starting. And again, hopefully we can get it going. We can have the Olympics next year. Hopefully it doesn't impact that. I think for our sport, it's very important um, to be able to have the Olympics. So I'm hoping go USA. <laughs> uh, Paula, uh, one of the last questions. Um, what do you think or what's your opinion? Or, or, uh, more than that, um, do you think the, the upcoming Uh, pro, pro league for women uh, volleyball in the USA. What does the league need to be successful? You know, that's that's the million dollar question. They've tried. We've tried to bring both men's and women's professional sports to the U.S. And um, I hope this is this is it. I hope they have the right recipe to get it going. I think it's marketing, publicity. I think now our players are known. Um, there's great, you know, uh, ambassadors for our sport. Um, and I, you know, with the bottom of my heart, I hope that we can get the professional league going. Yeah, we, I hope so. Not only women, but also men yes, in both. Yes, obviously, great. yeah. Okay. Both, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Paula, uh, 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 the last question is, which Mexican food, real Mexican food, do you like the most? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a trick question? No, no. Yeah. Hey, Chipotle and Taco Bell are not Mexican food. <laughs> no. I, the, the steak tacos that we would get every time that we would come down there, we just go to the local um, vendor that was on the street and we get the steak street tacos. They're the best. Great. Right. And do you put uh, salsa, chili in that? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Great. <laughs> And a little avocado, a little guacamole. Wow. Avocado is great. Guacamole is great. It's the greatest thing. <laughs> uh, Paula, thanks a lot for being here. It has been a pleasure. Thanks a lot for the people who, has, uh, who have watched us and listened to us. Thanks a lot for being here. You're a volleyball agent, and I'm very, very honored that you accepted the invite to be here in the Volley Talks. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, hope to see you pretty soon in a volleyball court. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, okay. Paula. See ya. Bye.